All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to today's podcast. We're talking about you can't lose weight. Now, I'm going to get real technical on you here. Literally, you can't lose weight. It's a weird way to think about it. I know what we all mean when we say it, but you need to understand that your subconscious mind is controlling your weight in the first place, and your subconscious mind is extremely literal. And the literal meaning of losing weight as a goal is a very confusing one to your subconscious mind. So when you get when you're in a room and the heat turns off and you start getting cold, you don't say, oh, we lost the heat. When you get put the air conditioner on, you start cooling the room down to more comfortable. You don't say, oh, we're losing the, the heat. You know what I mean? Like you don't say these things. It's a strange way to think about it. When you went out get that debt, it's not just about, I want to lose the debt, right? That, that's an odd way to think about it. it. It's impoverished thinking and it's confusing because like literally, technically, you can't lose weight. How would you do it? Like, I'm literally serious. How would you lose weight? Right. It's just it's a weird phrase. And I think the more specific you get, the better chance you have of success because it means more to your subconscious mind. So to really understand this, we need to understand cause and effect. Weight loss is an effect. And the cause of it is to eat better, live healthier. And magically over time, through some process, we lose weight. We end up weighing less. OK, but technically to refer to as losing weight is just strange because you can't lose weight. So what we want to do is we want to focus on eating better, living healthier, doing things that cause our weight to be lower. OK, so as a shortcut, instead of saying I want to lose X amount of pounds, we start saying I want to be X amount of pounds. I want to live as a X amount of pound person. You see, now your subconscious mind, that's a very clear message, right? That makes it a lot different to your subconscious mind, how you're thinking about it, because when you think about losing weight, like weirdly, subconsciously, what you're doing is you're always referencing that being overweight state. You're always thinking of yourself as an overweight person and trying to lose the weight somehow. And when you start to say, I want to be X amount of pounds, I want to be this person, you're really starting to make it congruent how you need to eat and live in order to be that weight. And the other way is confusing to our minds. So the more specific you get with your language and the more specific you get, that again, there is no losing weight. There is only changing up these effects that create, changing up these causes that create the effects you want. One more, more way to think about it is that your weight's a reflection. It's a reflection of your eating and lifestyle. And so just like when you're looking in the mirror, we don't change the reflection by drawing on the mirror. We change the reflection by changing what's being reflected. And so again, the more clear you get about, I want to lose weight, but in order to do that, I eat and live healthier. I want to live and eat as a X amount of pound person. And you start thinking of who you want to be, not basing it around who you do not want to be. And that's what all of your weight loss subconsciously is oriented around. It's you thinking yourself as an overweight person and trying to lose it, trying to be something else. And it's confusing to your mind. So the more clear you get about who you want to be, how you want to eat, how you want to live, it sends a much clearer message to your mind and it increases your chances of success tremendously. So start thinking about who you want to be, what you want to weigh, as opposed to what you want to lose and who you want to stop being. And I think you're going to find it's very powerful. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask them. We're on a Monday. Oh, it's a funny Monday. Feels like I'm in half vacation mode, so <laughs> I'm the weird one. Uh, Irene says, are you Greek? Uh, I am Greek. Uh, I'm Greek. Katsula is my last name. My father was full Greek. My mother was not. Oh, whoops. Let me change this up. My old camera set up. Oh, oh. There we go. All right. So the people on Instagram and YouTube can see me. I always live stream these. So I TikTok's kind of my main streaming source here. The, the people kind of the most people and probably tend to talk the most. Um, but you can always watch me on YouTube and uh, on Instagram. And Facebook, it's right in there too. But uh, yeah, TikTok's probably the main one. At least for now, I always still got it. I don't know what's going on with that whole thing. So I hope they keep TikTok going. <laughs> I know it's not the, probably not the best thing for our mental health, right? But uh, you know, I don't know. Lots of things aren't. But anyways, hope I have a nice weekend. Kind of getting back into the swing of things. I had a a busy weekend, which again, it's um, it's funny. I had a, a client and she said, I want to make weight loss non-negotiable. I want to make my health, my weight non-negotiable. So I don't ever, you know, have to question it. Just, just, it's done. You know, it is, this is what I am. But I never believe that that's possible because I believe it's always, we're always negotiating with ourselves, you know, what we're going to do. And, um, 
this weekend I've been negotiating by eating a lot of cookies where I don't normally eat them, you know, but all of a sudden my daughter had a play. And so it's like, it's just a different, all of a sudden it's like, it's like a vacation week is what it is. And then I'm going away at the end of the week too, on top of that. So it's just, it's funny though. It just brings up the point that with the dieting thing, this idea that you're going to be this rigid, this rigid fixed plan that you're going to follow forever with no flexibility in it is, is setting yourself up for such failure. I mean, how could you ever succeed with that? Right. Life's always changing. Things are always just happening and, um, something support you, something things throw you off, but we need to have the ability to kind of be flexible with them. I think, uh, let's see, it's not a question here within potential. I've been floating and having more body awareness. That makes sense. Be who you want to be. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, it really is about being who you want to be. I, I, I could talk about this for hours. I don't, it gets, it gets a little, little tedious, I suppose for to get into semantics. I love semantics because your subconscious mind is so literal. It's like a computer and we need to be very specific with what we're saying to it. And even the concept of losing weight is just a, it's just a confusing idea to it. It really is. I promise you. Cause you know, I'll tell you like, like again, you may think your, your initial goal is to lose weight. I, I don't disagree with that, but the real goal is to get to your goal weight and stay there for the rest of your life on your autopilot. So I've been my goal weight for 30 years, one blip 12 years ago, but I'm not, I'm not always maintaining this weight loss. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm not thinking about it that way. I'm thinking about how do I live and eat day to day to be at the weight I want to live at, you know? And, and I, I know like it's, it sounds so obvious, but it's like, it's not how anyone thinks about it because everyone's just always thinking about losing the weight. And that's just the starting point of really setting yourself up for failure in a million different ways. But uh, yeah, the more you start to spend time with who you want to be, that's what program yourself is built around that. It's the idea of who do you want to be? and understanding that who you want to be is you don't even know you don't even know who you want to be because you've been saying i just want to lose weight it, it's a, it's a vague generalized unclear fuzzy target that you're aiming at and what you really want to do is become the person who you want to be and who is that person well it takes focus it takes some concentration it takes some creative energies and it takes connection you've got to connect and focus on who you want to be consistently day in and day out you have to practice it and that's what program yourself is really built around it's it's again it's techniques for you to connect to who you want to be <clears throat> and step into that version of you how does that version of you think how does that version of you eat live and then ultimately look and feel and the more you connect into that reality the more you make it a reality because stepping into that reality with, with with your imagination starts to create neural pathways and networks that make that reality a possibility for you right now. It doesn't exist because you do not have the neural pathways to be a thin and healthy person, but you're never thinking about being a thin and healthy person. You're always thinking about not being an overweight person. And ironically, that is the thing that's keeping you stuck as an overweight person. It's the craziest, but yeah, it's great. The, the more you connect with your body, the better. What's up, Jody. Yep. Happy Monday. Happy Monday's right. This is a good Monday. <laughs> to me, this is like a hump day already because I'm going to be gone at the end of the week. So I'm feeling, I'm feeling excited. <laughs> I needed a shift. I needed a different week. Uh, what's up, Zena? Zena says, I was told to journal to stop binge eating. Journaling is causing so much emotions that I binge. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I don't mean to laugh on that. I'm sorry you're dealing with that. I'm laughing at the irony of that. So often the things we're told to do are the things that create the problem or make it worse. And, uh, it's just this thing. It's this over and over and over again when it comes to weight loss. Um, man. So yeah, I, I feel bad for you that, that you're trying something, but I feel happy for you that you're trying something new too. And I think what's more important, there, there is no right or wrong. There is no, oh, journal to stop binging. There's none of that. You can try different things and then so, see how they impact you. And so clearly journaling for you is bringing up some emotions that it's actually making things worse. Now that could be just an initial thing though, too. You know, as you start to actually pay attention to your emotions, you might start to gain some kind of muscle to be able to deal with them and then work through that is another way to look at it. Um, but you might hate journaling too. And it might be a, a way of focusing on things that triggers you and makes things worse. So it's always, I always say kind of ground zero of your success is building around yourself, really customizing what you're going to do to who you are. And people are always giving us and telling us what to do but there's a lot of people on the planet and you are a unique sunflower that uh, can uh, sunflower sunflowers unique. I bet you, I bet there's no two sunflowers. 
Snowflake is what I meant. You're a unique snowflake. And uh, what's going to work for you is only going to work for you. So you should just create it around that. But that being said, I think paying attention to what triggers the binge eating is a valuable strategy. Um, journaling sometimes can be overwhelming. So that's why I, I recommend it sometimes to certain clients I have. But more often than not, I look for a more casual approach. And that's really what the redo technique is. And, and the simple explanation of it is that you look at when you binge eat on the other side of it, after you're done binge eating, you go five minutes before you start and you ask yourself, where was that hunger wise? Where was I at emotionally? And you start to diagnose and understand what triggers the binge eating. And journaling, again, is a more in-depth version of that, but it can be overwhelming at first. So I prefer the more casual, you know, just kind of tiptoeing into it. Uh, so because that what you're experiencing is very common. And so you start journaling into a deep diving into it and it's overwhelming and then you don't want to journal. You don't deal with the emotions and now you're binging. So again, we can balance out how we approach things and we can take it a little more slowly, a little more gently. So my suggestion to you. Um, Crystal says, you've been helping my, my journey so much. I'm down 14 pounds. Thank you. That's awesome, Crystal. These things I can't, I can't see. I think a screenshot. I love, I love all my, my success stories. Great job, Crystal. I'm glad. I'm, I'm super happy to help you. And um, super job losing 14 pounds. Oh, that's wonderful. All right. That's a great job. Uh, Doxy Mom, how do I limit my pleasure eating days? I can always find an excuse to overindulge. Uh, yeah, for sure. But it's, it's understanding those excuses. You know, so much of this process is really understanding the bullshit you say to yourself that tricks you. And uh, so, you know, the, the idea of like compressing the pleasure days into pleasure days and then paying attention to them is exactly what's going on, is you're starting to understand them more. We have to stalk and understand our bad, our bad habits. You're not just going to stop them. They're happening for a reason and they're happening for a good reason to you subconsciously. So when someone says, I can always find an excuse to overindulge, I can always convince myself that the pleasure of the food is better than the pain of the consequence. But that just takes practice. That's just a focus. It's just you practice, focus on the consequence, and that doesn't happen anymore. So again, Doxy, what you're experiencing, again, dieters just want to start day one, everything's perfect. You don't need to learn shit. You just start on day one doing everything perfect, and you maintain until you lose your weight. And that's not real life. So real life is you understand what is it that I say. So I'll give you an example. What I mean, I was talking to my daughter about procrastination, which is something I deal with it as well. And she taught me more in a five minute conversation than a lot of the work I've been doing on myself. But I said, what, when you procrastinate, she goes, oh, it starts at the beginning of the week. And then it gets, it builds up in intensity until the end of the week. And so I said, what do you have? What happens at the beginning of the week? What do you say to yourself? She goes, I say, I have enough time. And I said, ah, don't we all say that one? If you're a procrastinator, right? So it's like, it's not that you want to procrastinate. So we're not, the procrastination doesn't, it shows up here where, where the problem shows up a lot of times is not where it started. So the procrastination seems worse on Friday, but it really started on Monday. And it started on Monday when you say to yourself, oh, I got plenty of time. And, and so again, I'm just using this as an example that when we want to understand our behaviors, they're happening for a positive reason. The way you're thinking about things is the problem and you have to understand how you're thinking about things before you can change it so that's why i always say awareness precedes change so doxy mom having some pleasure eating days and then overindulging is wonderful because you're learning something from it i can always find an excuse to overindulge great let's go into those excuses let's understand them let's find out so the next time you say the excuse to yourself oh wait a second here you go again that's not true Do you know what i'm saying so it's about understanding yourself and when you approach it this way it doesn't feel like you're fighting against yourself. It feels like you've resolved things within yourself and now you're on a better path. I hope that makes sense. But great job doing the work. Again, good job playing around with it. Um, Gabriella says, if I don't feel like eating sugar on pleasure days, can I eat it another day or shouldn't I? Um, that's a great question. I think, um, th again, the first, my, my core rule of everything is that there's no right or wrong. There's only what works for you. Okay. That being said, I think when you start having, when you start mixing up the days, I think it starts being confusing for your mind, which I'm not saying you can't do that. Okay. But I'm saying initially, I'd rather have like clean days, pleasure days. And I want them kind of framed that way. Cause I'm looking to, I'm looking to go into one mode, another mode. Now these modes don't mean that I'm always perfect or awful. Okay, I want to make that clear. So I have clean days sometimes where I'm eating sugar and I have pleasure sometimes where I'm eating really clean. OK, so it can happen. Um, I would play with it. That's what I would say. I would say I would try. I would try different things, Gabriella, because 
uh, what I want you to do first off is I want you to just relax. Okay. Again, this is, I always work on this with dieters because dieters are always in their heads and it's this all or nothing mentality that they have. And it's like, I'm either a hundred miles an hour going in that direction or I'm not doing anything. And so it's hard to like, Oh, let me try something. <laughs> How do you try something in a diet? You know what I mean? You don't you either go all in or you're not doing it at all. So we want to try different stuff and um, just see how it affects us. So yeah, if you don't feel like eating sugar in the pleasure days, don't eat it obviously. And then see if the, the craving just passes. If you want to have it, try it, you know, and see what happens. Again, I came up with all this just through trial and error. And I'm just sharing with you best practices I've seen for the biggest group of people. Okay. But you're always a unique person. So again, relax, calm down and just see what works for you. See, see what works best for you. What's up, Kadel? Haven't seen your one of your lives in ages. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been here. I'm here every day. Every Monday through Friday, I'm here. Uh, oh, look at that, Astrid. I'm back on the bike after a month off, finally. Good for you, Astrid. And that's just the way it goes. You know, this is real life. This is what I try and tell you. Get out of the all or nothing mindset and get into the all or something. And so Astrid had started riding her bike when she would listen to the lives. And then she got a mood, you know, didn't want to ride her bike <laughs> and she did it, but she still kept listening to the lives and she was showing up and now she's kind of got worked through the emotional thing that comes up. It's kind of, you know, it's gone away a bit. Now she's back on the bike. This is how things go. This is real life. As I'm trying to tell you, you, you got to stop with the streaks of dieting and just start getting to the all or something mindset. And so for Astrid, she wasn't riding the bike for a month. But, but, but first of all, you know, she was, she was listening and then she started adding the bike and that was helpful. Then she got, got, got a mood, got off track for a couple of weeks, still showed up for the lives, stopped riding the bike, worked through the moods a bit. Now she's back to the bike. So she's not starting from scratch. She's re revivified, reenacted a habit that she created and now it's there and she's kind of added it again. So now it's even stronger. She'll go through another mood at some point in the future. Probably I don't want to ride the fucking bike, get off the bike. And then uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, by she'll go back on the bike. It'll be even stronger now. This is change. And uh, this is how it goes. So, you know, this is your alternative to your, your you know, your dieting bullshit that you keep doing. Where, oh, and here's Monday, by the way. <laughs> give me some, give me some hearts if you're starting your keto plan today or your Weight Watchers plan, or you're going to go see your doctor about Ozempic today. Yeah. Oh, and Ozempic. Yeah. I, I made a video too. If anyone's interested, I got my YouTube channel, which I'm starting to make more content for, but I just made a video about that uh, Oprah Winfrey special. I finally watched it and, uh, and, and got it. And it was, it was everything I imagined, you know, which is to say that I didn't, I don't enjoy. <laughs> oh, the Ozempic thing, but I got some fun stuff to tell you. Cause I, I was looking at it and uh, I have to I'm a little figure out where to start with this whole thing. But, um, what I don't like, I don't like so much about it. Just go watch the video. Actually, I'm just going to leave it alone. Deanna says, what's an example of how to eat for a pleasure day? Okay, great, great question. Uh, how to eat for a pleasure day. It's de it depends. It's for each person. So for me, uh, I look to, now again, it depends on your philosophy. All right. So my philosophy is, I think flour and sugar are two ingredients. Flour, sugar, and processed foods are three ingredients I really look to limit in general. That, that's kind of part of my my philosophy is that I want to limit those foods. And so on my clean days, I'm, I'm limiting, reducing, removing sometimes completely sugar, flour, processed foods. So when my pleasure days come, I will eat more flour, sugar, and processed food than I do on the other days, which is to say it isn't that much, but it's more than I do on my clean days. And so everything's relative in life and humans need a sense of variety, most humans. And so having these clean pleasure days are really important. And so the pleasure days become the things, you know, I don't know, it's, it's different for each person, but pleasure days, maybe the days you eat ice cream or you eat cookies or you eat pasta or you have pizza or whatever it is you like to eat. I know you said, oh shit, I'm gonna go wild with that. Well, you may at first, but what's gonna happen is you're gonna learn how to eat for pleasure. You don't know how to eat for pleasure. A lifetime of over restricting has screwed you up so much in terms of how to eat for pleasure that you don't even know how to eat for pleasure. And the greatest pleasure you can get out of any food is when you eat it at your goal weight in a controlled way where you don't lose control. And so that's what the pleasure days are really built to, to help you with because you're not good at it now. You either are, it's all or nothing and you have a very hard time kind of moderating things and it takes some practice. And I think it also takes some structure and strategy. And that's what the five, two model is. And so pleasure days for me, like I'll have like a bagel egg sandwich 
on Saturday morning where it's like, I don't eat bagels during the week. You know, I'm not eating bread really during the week. Um, I skip lunch. I'll, I'll have dinner. Now, again, I hate, I hate even sharing this with you all because I've been doing this for 30 years. So it's like, you know what I do, who gives a shit? It doesn't matter. It, it's what you do, but, um, it's kind of whatever foods, like if you eat a lot of ice cream, I would work to limit or reduce ice cream during the clean days. And then I'd eat more of it on the pleasure days. You know what I mean? So it's hard for me to give any, I don't like to give examples of what I eat because I'm me and I've been doing this for a while. I'd be more interested in like what you like to eat and being strategic with you. And so it doesn't have to be everything all at once either. Uh, I want to make that clear. It's about strategically, you know, probably starting with the, the biggest challenging food you have. And it's important strategy. So say your biggest challenge is eating Oreo cookies, you know? And so uh, Oreo cookies, like I'll be like, okay, I don't want to eat those during the week. I'll eat those on the weekend. So, you know what I mean? So it, it becomes, th there's a little bit more to it than just clean. There is a lot of strategy to it. So, um, but but it's about figuring out what works for you and kind of custom making and tailoring it for you. But the idea is what, what we're looking to do, just simply, there's so much to the clean eating days and the structure you're eating this way. But a big part of it is that we're looking to highlight certain foods that you struggle with and get some more control over them. And one of the best ways to get control over them is again, to have these, these kind of bright lines between the days um, and the bright lines of intention. So I'm, I'm highlighting that word. That was a word before Miss uh, Miss Pierce Thompson there took it. Um, and I'm a huge fan of hers anyways, but I, I don't believe in bright. I believe in bright lines, but I also believe you're going to cross those lines sometimes when it comes to food because food's not drugs. It's drug like some of them, but it's not drugs. So, uh, yeah, we, we have kind of these bright lines. These are my clean days. These are my pleasure days. I'm going to, you know, if I'm struggling with Oreos, I'm going to work to cut down the Oreos during these days. And then I can have them on these days. And that strategy works very well. And, you know, the first couple of times you might cut way down over here and then overeat them here. Who gives a shit? But that's just part of learning how to control them. Um, and even still, even if you did that, you'd still probably eat less over the week, you know. But again, it's just, it's a philosophy that you customize for yourself. Hope that makes sense. Um, Deanna says, yes, pleasure is always equal and overeating loss of control for me. Exactly. Think about this, folks, because I had a, such a great conversation. I don't know if Connie's here, but um, Connie was, Connie's in the program and she, and she's been listening to the podcast for a long time. She's lost 30 pounds listening, you know, so she's really, really motivated and, and listens to everything and, and all that. So she starts the program and she starts her pleasure days. First pleasure day, she puts eight pounds on. Okay. And she's freaking out. So we got a coaching call and we were talking and we tweaked a couple things. The next pleasure day, she lost 0.4 pounds. And so that was so interesting to me because this is someone, she had lost a hundred pounds and I, I keep getting confused with another person. I forget if she's lost a hundred pounds and put it on once or twice. Um, but again, she understands nutrition. She's very smart, motivated, all the rest of it. Um, but she does not know how to eat for pleasure. And the hundred pounds she lost, we talked about this and I tell me if this doesn't sound like your situation in the past, when you've lost weight and what you believe you need to do to lose weight is you need to give up foods that are pleasurable. You think you need to live a life of no pleasure from food in order to control your weight. And I think as long as you hold that belief, you're going to be in tough shape because your brain's a pleasure seeking mechanism. And I don't think you're going to give up pleasure for the rest of your life in order to lose weight. I just don't. It, it doesn't seem to work out. <laughs> You're not alone if that's your situation experience too. So again, what I would rather do is I'd rather go to the next level and say, what can we do to actually keep you on track? And what works out very well is again, to have clean and pleasure days, but you've got to learn how to eat for pleasure. That's like, it's ironic that one of the secrets of mastering your weight is learning how to eat for pleasure. Cause you think, you know, oh, I don't eat for pleasure, Jim. No, you don't. Cause you think eating for pleasure is quantity. It's, and it's, it's not. You've been conditioned to think that way, but how do you feel at the end of all those binges? How do you feel at the end of eating all that food? It's fun eating it. I get it while you're doing it. Kind of. Even now, I think you'd be surprised if you paid attention. So yeah, we got to, we got to structure the eating, I believe. And we got to learn to eat for pleasure. Really important. Um, what's up, Aaron? Hey, Jim, I'll definitely check out that video you recorded about Zempic and Oprah. Yeah, I think it's a good video. I think it's interesting. And I think it, it's, um, it's just a good take. It's the same shit, but it's like, it's the same stuff I say every day here, but it's just more specific. And, um, I got more stuff coming because I can't stand it. <laughs> like, I can't, I can't take it. The Ozempic stuff, all of it. I hate it. I hate it now. I was kind of like, you know what? And I was, I was, I support anyone's on it. So don't, don't turn off. Don't turn off. If you're on Ozempic, I'm not, I'm here to support everyone. 
Um, what I get upset about is the way it's just business and it's all conditioning. And I'm, I'm not knocking even the, the drug so much as I am knocking the people that sell it to you and the way they do it. And I hate it. And so watching that is very frustrating to me. Um, but at least I can make videos and give you a different perspective. And that makes me feel better. Um, SS time for me. Uh, sugar feels like a drug to me. Yeah, I get that. But, you know, just because something feels like a drug to you doesn't mean it is a drug either. You know, just, just to be honest, and it could be like, like some people are so addicted to food that, but it's very, very rare for people to be like absolutely out of control, addicted to food. And if you think you are addicted to food, my big question to you is, are you addicted to food or do you have zero strategies for how to manage your sugar intake? Because if your only strategy to, to deal with sugar intake is to try and not to eat so much of it, then that's a shitty strategy. So, you know, and I know, I know like, there's a great chance you don't have a good strategy at all because I've been doing this for 20 years and I work with really smart, intelligent, successful people and they never have strategies. No one has strategies to lose weight. Your diets are tactics, folks. It's a one tactic game, right? Where you're going to cut carbs, cut calories, stop eating for 16 hours, count points, track your calories, exercise a lot. It's always one thing you're doing. And it's very interesting to me. I will tell you, I'm feeling, feeling, I'm always feeling pretty confident about what I say anyways, but I watch Oprah's, Oprah's shenanigans and, um, once again, I'm reminded that I am not the smartest person uh, on the planet by any means, but I have somehow figured out a philosophy of food that has served me well. I am not a scientist, but 30 years ago, and part of it was yoga. Um, a lot of it was my wife teaching me stuff that she'd learned, uh, but it's there's a philosophy I learned about food that's commonsensical that has served me so well over 30 years and it's preceded every giant scientific breakthrough that affects weight. <laughs> I really mean this. I genuinely mean this. Uh, and some of the latest stuff is the GLP hormone. You know, like I look at that, I don't want to get into that right now, but, but it's like, you know, there's natural ways to increase that. What do you know? You know, and then, um, the microbiome, which you may or may not even know about, you know, like the, the way I was thinking about food affects that and that helps you out. It, it's your, your hunger. That's the big one. That's why I'm really on these last couple of days, just thinking about Oprah putting the Ozempic out there. Oh, just getting lost in thought. What do you think of fat burning pills? Um, I think fat burning pills are, are silly. Unless you plan on taking fat burning pills forever. What fat burning pills would you even take forever? No, no, I just want to lose, use them to lose the weight. Okay. And then what? <laughs> you know, this is what I mean. Like, again, I don't know what fat burning pills you're talking about, but I have not seen very many healthy fat burning pills. <laughs> you know, here's what it comes down to. Though. I will tell you this, and this is more the Ozempic stuff, and I will get into this in a minute, but... It's like everything in the weight loss industry is always treating the symptoms. And I think we know that. I mean, the medical, that's where my medical, my obesity conspiracy is the food companies, the diet companies, and the medical industry. And the medical industry, my, my beef with them is that they're, it's a business model that's built on treating symptoms, not on finding cures. And here comes Ozempic, you know, another treatment of the fucking symptoms. And that's what it is. And I watch Oprah Winfrey and I watch her talk about how the medicine works with her cool graphics and how it increases GLP-1 hormone so you feel more satiated. And then they show a picture of a muffin and donuts so that you can eat your food and it'll slow down digestion so you feel fuller longer. And I say, Jesus Christ, I've been saying this shit for fucking 30 years that what you're eating is part of the problem. If you're eating processed food, processed food is literally designed. I bet, and now I know, I bet they're designing it to lower GLP hormone release, you know? But it's like, once again, that the Ozempic is just to treat the fucking problem. There's a symptom. That ain't fixing the problem. It's not. So, oh, I, I just need something, Jim. I get it. I know you need something. I know you're desperate, but I'll get questions like this all the time. What do you think about water fast? What do you think about fat burning pills? What do you think about this tea? What do you think about this, uh, you know, this potion from the Amazon? I think it's all bullshit. What do you think about Weight Watchers? What do you think about keto? I think it's all bullshit. I think it's all one tactic that's not, hasn't worked for you. It's not going to work for you. What do you think about Zempic? 
I think there's other ways to accomplish that goal that are a lot healthier. And let's find out what happens with Ozempic. Everything else seems to end up being not great over time. So let's see. But even if you do take Ozempic and you lose weight, what about all the other parts? You know, I, I mentioned that in the video. Again, you can look at YouTube and watch if you want. But they have the girl there, the Amy, right? Of course, the story, she's, you know, morbidly obese, loses the weight. Now she's happier. But they talk about why she was obese. She's obese since she was a kid. She goes, food was my best friend. And then I lost my father and I went to an absolute depression. Okay, well, now you're on Ozempic. You still don't have any friends and you still don't know how to deal with the loss of your father. So you're still, you're thinner and you're just as depressed because you haven't dealt with the core issue. Are we just going to ignore that? I don't know. Ignore it all you want. That's where I'm at today. Because <laughs> it's like, I know most people just want a fast cure. I know, I know with weight loss, you've been conditioned. I don't blame you. You've been conditioned your whole life by diets to just want some instant cure to the weight loss. And, um, you know, it's so obvious watching the Oprah thing because they go, they shift from selling you fucking diets that don't work to now selling you a medicine that doesn't deal with the core problem. And it's just always the same thing. Well, what's the solution, Jim? What's, what's a natural Ozempic? Well, you know, that you know that there are some foods you eat that you absorb really quickly and you don't get any satiety from. And you know that there are other foods that you eat that stay in your gut for a long time and make you feel much more satisfied for a lot longer. Is this what we're talking about in 2024? It makes me crazy. <laughs> like, it puts me in a bad mood because it's like, you know, here's the thing with the diets. You just, you just, you're used to it now because it's been around, but now with Zempic, it's like, it's just like, okay, how can we show, how can we do this in a way that we don't, we don't have the cat out of the bag? Well, it's the cat out of the bag that we're increasing this hormone that you can increase naturally with natural foods as much though, maybe not. But it gets down to the deeper philosophy that for fucking 75% of the population is overweight or obese and they don't understand satiety. They don't understand what foods to eat that make them feel satisfied and which foods make them feel hungry really fast. How is this possible? How is it possible in 2024, keto is the most popular diet followed by intermittent fasting? It's just, you know what I mean? And now here's Ozempic in, in Oprah and fucking, she's the, she, you know, she's the Pied Piper of, of dumb diet thinking. As smart as she fucking is, she's as stupid as anyone on the diets. It, it makes me nuts because I don't get it. I look at her and I, I don't understand how you're you're so brilliant. And yet you think like a dipshit when it comes to dieting. I ain't blaming her. I say it's to everyone. It doesn't matter how smart or stupid a person is. It just matters what they think. And we all been conditioned by diets to be dipshits. Dip shits. Oprah included. Because Oprah fucking included, because I watch her talk about her liquid diet and how she she wheeled the fat up. Remember the big, we all, I didn't watch Oprah when I was a kid, but I, I saw it enough to know, remember she wheeled that wheel, that that gold red flyer thing out and it got all the fat on it. Oh, then she did that with a liquid diet. And then she comes up talking to those epic. Well, I can't, I couldn't figure out a way to keep it up. And I was tired of being shamed. I did Well, can, did you ever talk about your stupid fucking strategies of liquid dieting of Weight Watchers? These are inept, incompetent, impotent strategies. Can we at least, listen, I'm not even judging the medicine. I'm just saying, can we at least talk about strategy? We get the doctors out there. The fucking guy works at Cleveland Clinic, works with obesity's obesity doctor. He gets out there and says nothing. I'm like, Jesus Christ, if you give me five minutes of national air talk, I can't shut up. I just want to share, to try this, do this, do this. Have you tried about mindset, lifestyle, eating? You try this, do, 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 do. This works for people. This doesn't work for people. He gets out here. No, you can't lose. Oh, 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 obesity. He's getting fucking nothing. Nothing to say. Oh, again, is he selling medicine? You know what I mean? He's a, he's a consultant to the Ozempic companies. It's just frustrating. And it's like, whatever, man, if people want, people want fast, easy solutions. That's fine. <laughs> I know if you're listening to this, you're, you're not like that. I get it, but you have to consistently fight against yourself to not be like that though, too. Cause it, it's such a, it's such a shitty way of thinking. And it's so easy because you're just going condition with it. But anyways, Penelope says, I truly appreciate your wisdom. Can you break it down the way you suggest to eat? Or how do I find you on YouTube? Um, yeah, YouTube is Jim Katsoulis, K-A-T-S-O-U-L-I-S. I don't have enough stuff on YouTube yet, but I do the podcast every day. So you can listen to the podcast, um, which is on YouTube. And um, I am going to start making more YouTube videos. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, breaking it down, it's basically, I think of it as the weight mastery pyramid is, is what, what I, how I think in terms of this. And the top part's eating, okay? So eating is the number one thing affecting your weight. But that's usually all people focus on and they have no foundation under it. And so I think 
underneath eating, you have to have a lifestyle approach and a mindset approach. So the weight mastery pyramid, in order of importance, mindset, lifestyle, and then eating. And so it's important that you have a more comprehensive approach to mastering your weight. I, I just don't know how without that comprehensive approach, you'd ever have success genuinely. And, um, so that, that's kind of the real, but what I will tell you is this, what here, Penelope, what I'll tell you to do, I'll tell you the best way to do it is go to my bio. I think you're on Instagram, go to my bio or go to program yourself, then.com click the link at the hypnosis session. I give you, it's free. It's the new thin me. I know some people have trouble with it. If you ever have trouble getting that session, just shoot me an email at Jim at program yourself, then.com or just message me through the app and I'll get that straightened for you. That it just happens sometimes. But go get that hypnosis session. And then as soon as you sign up for it, I give you a training, three steps to master your weight. Watch that training. It's 25 minutes. And I break down the entire system I just talked about uh, in detail. And I think that that would be what I would absolutely suggest to watch first. Um, what do you think of fat burning pills for short-term use? I just don't think of things for short-term use. I, I don't, I, I don't want to put my time and energy into things that are short-term because it's just like, again, you lose the weight and then you put it back on. Then what though? So like you're thinking about, like, oh, I'm going to do burn, fat burning pills just so I can lose some weight. But my head's like, well, what do you do once you're done taking the pills? Then what happens? Well, I put the weight back on, you know, and, you, and you're making up some crazy story in your head. Like, well, I'll just lose the weight and then I'll magically fix. That's what all dieters do. All dieters live under this. It's literally hypnosis, by the way. So if you ever wonder if hypnosis works or not, it absolutely works. And you've been hypnotized by the diet industry because what you think is crazy. What you think about weight loss is it's incomplete. It's jaggedy ideas. It's random things. You have no complete concept of how to master your weight. You have vague ideas of what to do to lose weight and they don't match together. And that's why you have no, you know, you've been trying to lose weight for decades and you know as little about how to lose weight now as you did before you started your first diet. You know, all this time and you're no better off than when you started because you're not learning something consistently. You're just learning, you know, oh, now I'm going to try this. Oh, now I'm going to cut out carbs. Oh, now I'm not going to eat for 16 hours. No, I'm going to do this. You know, it's just wild stabs at things. And so the fat burning pill is another stab at things. What, what, what's going to happen? You're going to lose weight for a little while and then you're going to get heart palpitations. You're going to get physically sick from, you have to stop taking them and then you're going to be all depressed because you put the weight back on. So that sounds like a horrible <laughs> way to go about things. You know, um, what goes into eating for pleasure, like slowing down eating? Um, no, no. The, the biggest thing that goes into eating for pleasure is eating foods you really like and getting the most pleasure possible out of them. So we're going straight at it. I'm, I'm aiming right at the heart of it. The irony of ironies is that you think what you don't realize is that the most important, the most important skill you need to master is the ability to get back on track quickly. But the next thing that's most important is you need to learn how to eat for pleasure and you do not know how to eat for pleasure. And so your weight loss is always and will always until you change this revolve around you seeing how long you can go without pleasure. And it's just, it's a very small amount of time. So you better figure out how to incorporate pleasure into your weight management strategy or what the fuck are you doing? You're going to live a life of no pleasure. Why would you do that? You never have, and you never will. You will sometimes be able to go for a couple more months, but you're never going to be able to maintain it long-term. And you're always going to be, again, dieters are just like, you know, they're just flip-flopped upside down all the time because you're all or nothing. You're constantly just getting churned. You know, you'll remind me of like, you go, go in the ocean, you know, you watch those surfers and they get those big waves. They're just like, they must be tumbling everywhere. That's what you're like with your weight loss. You, you don't you have no ground underneath you. There's no sense of stability foundation to, to build on. I always joke metaphorically, dieters are always trying to build a house from the top down, you know, for the roof down. You've got no foundation under you and you wonder why you can't succeed with it. And it, it's obvious, it's plain as day. But so yeah, eating for pleasure is what foods do you like the most? Oh my God, Jim, I'll eat everything in sight. No, you won't. Cause you don't even know what food gives you the most, most pleasure. It's, it's, I'm telling you, uncoupling quantity from quality when it comes to the pleasure of your food is very, very powerful. You ever notice this? The, the, the finest restaurants in the land aren't buffets and the shittiest food in the land is buffets. So you know what I mean? Like, like, like the pleasure of the food is not based on quantity. You've been conditioned with all that bullshit because you've been sold cheap food your whole life that they want to make. That's the pleasure. Oh, it's, it's brutal. And it's getting more brutal. I, I buy my kids some of this shit. Cause it's like, Jesus, a bag of Doritos. And I was like six, $7. I, I, you know, I'm going to start talking more about that. Cause it's like, yeah, fine. I could see like food was a lot cheaper and now it's way going up. 
and it's going up way more than the price of fruits and vegetables, I'll tell you. Fruits and vegetables, my stuff stayed pretty stable. You know what's gone up? All the junk food, all the processed food. So I can't even imagine. Never mind the taxes on it, which they should do anyways. But uh, yeah, you tell me. I can be oh, I, I can't. Oh, that's a lot of money. It's like, what are you spending a week on your food? How are you spending a week on Starbucks, on, on the bags of chips, on the cookies? That shit's expensive now. I mean, it's easy to spend five, ten dollars a day. Like easy, easy. I don't know. What's up, Joy? Uh, I liked what you said in your email about eating slow versus not eating fast. Yeah, it's a good one, right? So again, folks, yeah, if you're not in my world, go to my bio, click the link, get the hypnosis session. I give you, it's free. It's the new Thin Me. It's a kickstart session. Um, watch the video I made for you, Three Steps to Master Your Weight, right? About 25 minutes. We'll show you everything I'm talking about, but systematically. And then I email you every day. And I just sent it out this weekend. I was sending out a motivation challenge. So if you're, if you're looking for motivation, I send free stuff out all the time and I got more stuff coming. So yeah, get on my email list because um, I'm always... It's like real, the emails are really good. I used to, I used to be a program. Um, what are the habits of thin people? Um, I mean, I think of the habits that I teach in the program in order of importance is proper sleep, hydration, relaxation, breathing, nourishment, movement, meditation, gratitude. I think those eight habits, if you can weave those into your life, it's magical. And I think it does, does a lot of the heavy lifting of eating better for you. And most likely your habits are, are a mess. You know, and that, that makes it a lot harder to eat well. Um, what's up, Adele? I'm, it's going great. I'm in Ramadan. How should how should a person eat in Ramadan? <clears throat> um, that's a great question. I actually just had someone um, I'm a big fan of, actually. She, she just joined the program, and she's in Ramadan right now. So, which is an interesting time. I'm, I'm glad she signed up now because what we're doing for her is we're going to come up with a structured a way of eating during Ramadan. And then when she's off Ramadan, we'll come up with a structured way of eating when she's not Ramadan. So you need two, you know, especially so if you're a Muslim and you're, you know, for one month of the year, it's a completely different eating cycle. You, you might need a different strategy for them to come out because it's a bad news when we have the same strategy. We go in and now we're just trying not to eat all day. It just throws everything off. So um, how a person should eat in Ramadan is up to you. So it's, it's really about like, how should, how do you want to eat during Ramadan and how can we make that happen? You know, so, um, but there's a lot of ways to kind of play with that. It's for sure. Sue said, been thinking about getting on it. I'm assuming you're talking about Ozempic. I'm sure lots of people are thinking about it now after that special, you know, and, and uh, yeah, I made, I made that, I made a video for the, if it was new on YouTube, I just made a video about the Oprah thing with some thoughts on it. But the original video I made was like an hour long and I'm like, oh, I, I can't, it's just a commentary. I cut it down to like 50, 10 minutes or something, but um, I was going a little too in depth with stuff. But yeah, when you watch, it's a big old infomercial ad for for it. So I'm sure lots of people are considering it today, especially today, because now I, I know people say, oh, I'm going to give it one more shot. And they're like, you're going to start your keto plan or you're going to be fasting today. You're not going to be able to do it. And next, you know, what else, what else can you do? If if, you, if keto, if keto and intermittent fasting can't work for you, what other solution can there be other than the medicine? Right. I mean, geez, if a great plan like keto or intermittent fasting doesn't work for you, well, what other options are there? It must be my body. It must be the hormones in my body. If keto doesn't work for me, you know, what a great strategy keto is getting rid of carbs for the rest of your life. If that doesn't work for you, it must be a medical thing. <laughs> you know, I don't mean to be sarcastic, but you know, that's why I get out here again. I, and I'm joking, but I know like people just genuinely don't think of anything else. It, I always say this. You could ask a thousand people how to lose weight in America. You're going to hear diet, surgery, medicine, and you, you'll never going to hear mindset um, comprehensive systematic approach. You're not only going to say that. So you've been conditioned to think about mindset. I mean, about weight loss in a very limited way, which is why I do this. Cause I try and get out there and, and, you know, at least get the word out that there are other, other ways. That's why I made the video with the Oprah Ozempic thing, you know, cause you watch that shit and you're going to be convinced most likely. But even if you're not, there was no solutions there. And I don't blame them. Hey, whatever they're selling drugs. That's fine. You know, um, they do it. They have the right to sell whatever they want to sell, but they are not giving you any real solutions or other strategies that work. And no one ever talks about this. And I don't know why. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, Dill says, cause the hours we eat are different in the season. Yep. Yeah. You just need a different plan. What's up, Bree? Joined the program yesterday, filling out the mindset blueprints now. And it's been super eye opening. That's awesome. Bree. Great job. 
And um, yeah, I'll set you because I told you last week, right? I told you that uh, I give you a, a week of the coaching, so I will set that up. Let me write a little note. But great job taking action. Yeah, those blueprints, right? I mean, again, once you, they're very eye opening. I always say awareness precedes change because losing weight is not just enacting some strict diet with the same mindset you have and have had. It's about understanding yourself better so you can strategically master your weight once and for all by mastering your mindset, lifestyle, and eating habits and strategies. And so it's about learning. It's about understanding yourself first. So once you can see these things, I always say metaphorically getting those blueprints, it's kind of like you've had bad vision your whole life. And all of a sudden someone gives you a pair of glasses that are your prescription. All of a sudden you see the world clearly. And uh, that's what these blueprints are like. They allow you to see more granular, deeper aspects that impact your weight that you have never seen before. And once you seem like, oh, oh yeah, I don't, I don't have that. Oh, I don't know that. And now you can diagnose and fill in the missing pieces of your weight loss puzzle. And there's a lot of them. I'm sure you know a lot of eating strategies, but even your eating strategies, they're not really strategies. Again, they're just tactics. So in the eating blueprint, we go through strategies to make it easier and automatic to eat well so that you lose weight naturally. The lifestyle piece, we go through the eight habits and how to implement them easily, comfortably, how to weave them into your life. And the mindset, we go through the six categories that give you the mindset of a thin, healthy person. But it's like, you don't, you don't know any of these things. And what are you going to say to me? Ah, those things don't matter, Jim. Jim, Jim, cut your shit. Stop talking your shit. It's just about willpower, Jim. Jim, you're full of shit. Dude, this guy, I, I see this stuff all the time. I get these comments. So I, I'm not saying they're not true. I might be complete a full of shit. I might be totally full of shit. I have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm completely misinformed. Those, your mindset and lifestyle have nothing to do with this. Jim, structuring your reading, stop it. You're being, a, you're talking like a crazy asshole. Those things don't matter at all. Mindset, lifestyle, and eating strategies. What are you, what are you from a cult? What are, what's wrong with you? It's weight loss comes down to having the right diet and the right willpower, just forcing yourself to do it. Stop with all this horse shit, Jim. I, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't know what to say, but that's what is a crazy world. So once you can see these things, you know what I mean? Like it, it changes everything because you're not seeing these things right now. Because what do you think? Why do you think you're not losing weight? Because you just can't get yourself to do it. Right. <laughs> it's like, it's like what? You got to force yourself to do it more. I mean, here we are on a Monday. You're going to start your plan today. You're going to start anything today. Or you're just going to kick it off another week. Right. If you're kicking it off another week, you're going to kick it off next week too, because it's the same shitty plan waiting for you. It's not you. It's the plan. <laughs> right. You know, like a little litmus test you can use to see if you're, you're in, on the, in the ballpark of being on the right plan is, do you want to do it? <laughs> if you dread it, if you're just like absolutely dreading it, it's probably not a great plan. You know, if, if, hey, sometimes ah, I wish I was, wish there was another pleasure day. Oh, it's Monday. I wish it was still a pleasure day. No, that's normal. Fine. That's not a big deal. You know, but, but most people, it's just like, oh, I hate my plan. I got to force myself to do it. Well, here you are on Monday again. Here we are. Because if you don't do it today, it's already too late. You either did it or didn't already. Priority blew it. But holy shit. I say this every Monday too. I want you, I hope you listen to me every Monday. Every Monday so I can remind you of another week you didn't start your plan. Another fucking week. How many weeks has it been? It's 2024. I bet it's been about nine weeks. You started off the beginning of this, the year. You had two weeks you do all right. And then you fell off track. Here we are three weeks later, three months later, you know, people, my program still on track. Were they hundred percent the whole time? No. Are they still on track? Yes. Don't you wish you were, don't you wish you were on track the last three months? Imagine that. When's the last time you've been on for three months? When's the last time you've been on track for three months? Comfortably. Comfortably. So you're on track for three months and you look forward to the next the rest of the year and you're like, oh, sweet. This is getting better and better every day. Yeah, let me know. <laughs> Dying Diva says, do you agree that higher protein and lowering sugar and carbs makes you feel full longer? Um, yeah, for sure. But again, you're missing the big thing. And this is what drives me absolutely fucking insane. This is the new insanity for me is, and it's, it's straight at, you're not going to hear this time anytime soon anyways, but I've been on this for years now. And I thank Dr. Greger for this is that yes, protein is more satiating out of the macros. But the most satiating thing that you now don't have in your diet is fiber. Fiber. You're not getting enough fiber. I already know you're not getting enough fiber. 
How do you get the right fiber? I'm not talking about Metamucil. I'm talking about real fiber from real food, fruits, vegetables, beans, greens, more of these in your diet, more of these in your gut. That's the secret. Protein, fine. Fiber though. It's the fiber and it's the micronutrients because let's talk about your hunger. This is, here I go down trigger land because the whole, <coughs> I don't know why me, little old dumb me, hypnotist Jim knows about satiety and I watch Mr. Cleveland Clinic doctor, obesity doctor. Why doesn't, why is he not talking about fiber and satiety? It's the number one thing missing from our diet in America. Why? Because fiber doesn't process well. So they strip the fiber out of foods. They don't want to sell food with fibers in it because it makes it less addictive. Fiber slows down the absorption of the calories. Quicker absorption of calories makes a more addictive substance. Have you noticed the most two addictive substances are flour and sugar, two powdered substances that aren't natural. They're super processed to be super absorbable. So they spike your blood sugar. The spike of blood sugar is what's addictive. It's addictive. Your body loves spikes of blood sugar. It's never had them in history. It loves them. And so you're getting spikes of blood sugar because they're quickly absorbed. If it's quickly absorbed, it's not going to stay in your intestines as long as something that's not absorbed, is it? You get me on fucking Oprah's show. That's the first thing I'm going to say if she got me on, my, on that special. Cleveland doctor guy sitting there like a fucking mute. Not impressed. I'm not impressed. You know, I love doctors too. Like I love medicine, but these people don't want you to be well. They want you to lose weight taking medicine. And I don't give a shit. I, I'm just tired of it because it's so clear as day. I can't take it. You know, because that's, oh, is that what Ozempic's going to be? Because that's not how they've been framing it exactly. But that's what we're doing because we need satiety from what? From the same shit you've been eating? Hey, listen, if you're not willing to change your food, go get on Ozempic. Okay. But if you're looking for a real genuine at the source solution, yeah, change your eating, add more fiber, more protein. We already know about that. Why do we know about protein and not fiber? Because there's a lot more money being made off of selling you meat than there is selling you vegetables and fruits. And so, yes, higher protein and lowering sugar and carbs makes you feel fuller longer. But fiber is the magical ingredient for 95% of you. You're not eating near enough fiber. And for all you paleo keto people, paleo man was, was not a hundred percent fucking meat. The, the, the science does not show that the most recent science shows paleo man had 130 grams of fiber a day in their diet. And that makes a lot of sense. I'm not talking about Eskimos living up in Alaska, eating whale blubber for three months. I'm talking about most people living in an ecosystem where there's a lot of fiber to be eaten and that's what they're eating. And so you get the protein story because there's a huge meat industry that wants to sell you lots of protein and a culture around it that makes it real, you know, it, it's congruent with that as well. And you're not getting the fiber message and you probably never will. And so go look it up. Go look up natural ways to increase GLP-1 and notice the first shit you're going to see. Well, you won't see it first because no one wants to say it because it's fiber because no one wants to eat fiber because no one wants to eat fruits and vegetables. And that's what it really comes down to. Anyways, great job joining the program, Bree. Um, extra feisty today. I am. I'm just. I don't know. It's just. It's just annoying. It's annoying to me because it's like, like I just know there are such super duper smart. I think scientists are so smart because I always read about like. I understand psychology experiments. I'm not a scientist, but the psychology experiments they do. I'm just Jesus. They're genius. Like it's brilliant. So I think. Well, I guess my issue with science a lot of times is that they're typically asking the question, why are people overweight? And I don't, that, that's a different question than I'm asking, which is how do people that lose the weight long-term do it? And I don't see them asking that question. I'm just paranoid. But again, even though it's empic, I'm not saying that the fiber, and I'm sure the medicine cranks your GLP-1 up more. I, I wouldn't doubt that. But it just gets to the point that Fine, do Ozempic, but just be like, I don't want to change anything. I just want to feel less hungry. I don't give a shit about my emotions. I don't care how healthy I am. I don't care about getting a handle on this legitimately. I just want to lose weight. Then fine. You know, what I'm talking about is is more pro development anyways. Um, Penelope said about 40 years of cycling, trying everything. Um, You haven't tried everything, Penelope. But you, and this is for all of you. You can't say you've tried everything. You've tried every diet. 
diets are one unique way to approach weight loss and they're ineffective and don't work. And so have you ever tried a mindset based approach? You ever focused on mastering your weight? Probably not. And what I'm saying doesn't even make sense. So Penelope, again, go, please watch the video I made for you. It's about 25 minutes, but it'll just take you through a much more, a richer concept, I think, of how to approach your weight and how to master it. It's not a mystery. It's like learning an instrument though. There's no secret to learn the piano in 24 hours. There's no secret to master the piano in a week. You have to put in the time and the effort, use smart strategies, have a proper mindset and practice. And it's the exact same thing with your weight. You can't just lose 50 pounds this month. Who gives a shit? You can master your weight though. And it's, it's way easier than losing weight. If you strategically and systematically approach how you think, live, and eat and keep getting better at it and customize strategies and solutions around who you are as a human and your lifestyle and preferences, it's, it's not rocket science. You've never even done any of that. You do drastic, wild swings at trying to change your weight. Keto being the top of them. The top of them stupidest ones keto is the stupidest one for, for most people now if you love keto and you're just thriving and just just giddy on keto then i'm not talking to you i'm talking about people the vast majority that try it and think that's what they got to do to lose weight and hate doing it can't stay on it i'm talking to you what are you thinking <laughs> uh, deanna says when i cut down on overeating processed food i come back to reality with myself yeah exactly because processed food's a drug it's drug-like. Let's just put it that way. Very drug-like. I got to do some videos on that because you wouldn't believe it. See, you know, and that's the thing too. What I'm always trying to tell you is the difference between mindset and willpower. Mindset's way more important than willpower. And I can say this in the context of cigarettes. You're probably a non-smoker. And it's not because you're using willpower to fight against your cravings all day long. Your mindset, the way you think about cigarettes, you don't have any cravings. You think cigarettes are gross. So you don't have any cravings for them. No willpower necessary. Now, when it comes to the food... The way you think about the food, you absolutely desire it and crave it. Your desire is way up here. And so all you're doing is relying on willpower to try and fight against that. And it's a losing battle. So what you need to do is you need to change your mindset. The way you think about these foods, the desire goes way down. So the way I think about fast food, processed food, sugar, flour, I don't want it. Like I like eating it on, on a couple of days a week to have it, you know, moderately. I enjoy, but I don't want to eat it all the time. I don't want to feel like shit. And you feel like shit eating that stuff. So the way I think about it is completely different. And that's the, all that. And I didn't think this way. That's what I'm trying to tell you. This is the transformation that happened in me. Is that I changed how I thought about things. And that's what I help my clients do. Change the way you think about things. When you change the way you think about things, you change the way you behave naturally. Again, back to the cigarettes. You're not fighting off cigarettes because you want them so bad. You don't want them because you think about them and you think all the gross stuff about them. That's primarily the way you think about it. So yeah, when you get away from overeating processed foods, yeah, you're usually going to notice your hunger starts to fade away and you return back to normal. Exactly. Kelly says, I'm looking up whole nutrient-dense foods right now. Yeah, great. Astrid says, I'm doing one thing at a time, make neuro connections and make my daily routine. Yeah, that's smart, Astrid. And sometimes it's a little longer than we want. That's frustrating. But when you realize it's all in service of mastering something, I think it becomes a lot more palatable. Because, you know, again, it goes back to the, I love one of my favorite quotes in the world is that people, most people overestimate how much weight they can lose in a month and underestimate how much weight they can lose in a year. And so every time you attempt to lose weight, it's always focused on how much weight I can lose this week, this month. And you're doing overwhelming things that you can't stick with. And after a month, you're never lasting a month. You're never, you're never on your diet after a month. That's a real outlier dieting experience for you. Most of the diets are a couple days. And so, you know, you're not thinking about how much weight can I lose next year at this time? Where do I want to be at? You're never thinking that way. And that's a way more comfortable way to manage it. So. Oh, God, going for the walk with the dog. I can't wait to talk about that, Astrid. I'm so proud of you for doing that. That was great work. That was quick action. Great job with that, by the way. Um, but he says, I learned so much about myself listening to your podcast. If you are if you plan to learn, you must learn to plan. Yeah, strategies. Yeah, absolutely, Betty. That's great. I'm glad to hear that. Diane Davis says, great. I do eat a lot of vegetables, too, and it helps a lot. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But the fiber just is like, it's always kind of marginalized. It's never mentioned. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> James says you need a shirt that says Triggerland. I do appreciate when you go off one of your tangents, though. I know I try to calm myself down because I get, I get so frustrated. Um, because it's always just like you're, you're you know, that that's what people don't understand. 
I, I say this every day that, that the hypnosis, the value of hypnosis is not being hypnotized like in a trance, like by a hypnotist. It's understanding how hypnosis works because you have a hypnotic mind. You know, like I, I say this, I, I was joking. Someone's new in the program. She's a psychologist. And so I was saying, I think you're going to find that hypnosis is the most powerful psychology there is because it explains how you operate, right? We all got this same core problem that we have things we want to do or don't want to stop doing that we keep on doing or don't do, right? It's like there, there's what we want to do and then there's what we do. And learning how to actually, actually influence our behaviors is never taught. And, and it's because we don't even have an understanding of how our mind works. Do you understand you have a conscious subconscious mind that work totally different, what roles they play? You don't. And so it's like, if you don't know that, what you're trying to do is you're trying to consciously force yourself to eat different, live different. And what you find is you can do it for a couple of days, sometimes a couple of weeks. And then you always go back to your, your automatic behaviors. You always go back to the norm. So hypnosis to me is about how do we influence the norm? Because the norm's what you are. That's what you're going to be. And we want to change that up. So hope that makes sense. Um, Lindsay says, Jim, whenever I eat a lot of vegetables, it feels like 25% more of my brain turned on, woke up. Have you ever heard anyone say this before? Yeah, absolutely. My body feels great, but so does my brain. I have clearer thoughts. Yeah. I mean, and again, just the fact that you're saying that, it, this is what I'm trying to say. You have to understand one of the things the diet industry has done, and you know, the diet industry, it doesn't want you to lose weight. The diet industry is the food industry, just so you all know. You're wondering why you're, I don't understand. I've tried all the diets. I never lose weight on them. Why is that? Well, let's take a look behind the curtain. You know who owns all the big diets you're subconsciously referencing of how to lose weight? It's all the food companies. Did you know Weight Watchers was owned by Heinz? Jenny Craig was owned by Nestle. Uh, the company owns Atkins Food Products. is the same company that owns Carvel Ice Cream and Cinnabon. Uh, Slim Fast, the company that owns them is the same company that owns Ben and Jerry's Ice Cream. So do you really think if those diets really help people to eat less of their shitty foods that they would be out blasting those methods out to the world? When they buy program yourself, then and blast out to the world, then I'll, I'll eat my words. But they'll never do that because their sales would decline instantly, instantly the next day. They would never do that. So the fact that they're promoting diets, um, me thinks there must be a reason for that. And I think the top of the list of those reasons is they don't work. What the fuck, man? I mean, how many times are you going to do a diet and realize it doesn't work? I, I don't get it. <laughs> you know, come on. The diets don't work. And there's a lot of reasons why. Um, but yeah. So yeah. So anyways, one of the reasons the diets don't work though is this is a big part of it is they're always trying to motivate you by what? Looking better. You know, so diet ads, you've seen millions of diet ads in your life and they're conditionally always conditioning you to think about looking better. And so what that does is that causes you to think about your weight in terms of superficial. I want to lose weight so I look better. Weight, look, weight, weight, look. How do I look? How do I look? But the real story is what's going on in your body. How you're able to think. The energy you have. How your body's health is. Your mobility. Your freedom. Your independence. These are the things that really matter. Looking, looking better is fun too. Okay? But these other things are a lot more important. And as you start to focus on them, it changes the way you think about it. But yeah, you're absolutely right. You don't hear, yeah, you eat more vegetables, you feel 25% more mental clarity, more mental acuity. Of course you do. You're nourishing your body better. You're giving it what it needs. It's, again, it's, you're, you're way more comfortable putting sugar in your body than you are in your car, right? You'd never put sugar in your car. You internalize that very painfully. Oh, I don't want my car to break, but you'll dump sugar and shit into your body and not even think about it. That's not your fault. It's because you've been conditioned not to associate the consequences of the food on you. So again, there's three phases of food. There's anticipation, consumption, consequence. Every single food ad you've ever seen is focusing on the anticipation and the consumption of the food. They never focus on the consequence. But once you start paying attention to the physical, mental, and emotional consequence that happens five minutes after you finish eating, it's a whole nother story. You start to realize, oh, I'm tired. Oh, all the blood went to my stomach, I guess. A little brain fog. Oh, I feel exhausted. I feel kind of fatigued. I'm kind of moody. I'm feeling negative. I'm frustrated with myself. So I'm not making this shit up, dude. It's right there. You're, you're not paying attention to it. You don't pay attention. You're habituated to eating like shit. But it's like if you actually pay attention for a couple of days, you'll realize, holy shit, I'm living in a perpetual hangover. You're living in a perpetual hangover. And you don't realize it. And you are just so focused on want to lose weight so you can wear a bikini to the beach 
or just any bathing. I don't need a bikini. I'll just wear a bathing suit. Yeah. Well, that's a shitty fuck. You don't even care about that goal. You ever wonder why you've had that goal for 20 years and you never achieved it. Why does blood go to your stomach when you eat shitty food versus eating veggies? Um, I, I think it's just, it's more, it's more blood goes there and it, it's harder work for your body to, it's harder work for your body to digest processed unnatural foods than it is to process natural foods. So it's like all food, like an apple, there's a concept of it that it's, it's a food matrix, right? You can almost think like the matrix. It's, it's a matrix of nutrition and enzymes. And there's things in the apple that help it digest more efficiently. Then you look at processed foods and, um, it's a, it's a whole different story. So, you know, processed foods are high sugar, high flour. They spike your blood sugar. It's kind of the tsunami effect. Let's look at it that way. So it's not even just your stomach. You need to think syst systematically, um, systematically with it. So it's like spiking our blood sugar is very unnatural. And then I could drop you off in the woods and say, okay, go spike your blood sugar. And unless you find a beehive, you're not spiking your blood sugar. Okay. It's unnatural to do because most of the foods we eat don't, they're not absorbed quickly. Natural foods aren't absorbed as quickly. So spiking our blood sugar is unnatural. So when we spike our blood sugar, now we eat a box of Oreos, we blast our sugar up to the moon. And now our body's not that good with the insulin regulation. Cause again, blood sugar spikes are unnatural. So now our body, a lot of times will overshoot the insulin and we need too much glucose. All food breaks down to glucose and this is your blood sugar. So all foods go to glucose. And when you spike glucose, have high levels of glucose, it's toxic and inflammatory for your body. So your body pancreas releases insulin to clear out the blood sugar, but too much insulin is toxic too. And a lot of times your body over releases insulin and way clears out the glucose levels. Now, now you crash the glucose levels. Now, guess what? You're hungry again, hungry and tired again. And you repeat the whole cycle. So again, I put you in the woods. You couldn't even spike your blood sugar. I put you on the natural wood. You aren't spiking your blood sugar. Go watch, go watch the show alone. You need a sobering reminder of reality. Go watch the show alone where they live off the land and see how many times they spike their blood sugar in the 30, 90 days they're out there. It's zero, zero times. And so you're spiking your blood sugar five, four, five, six, seven, eight times a day. You know, and so it's a systemic, it's like a tsunami. It's such an overwhelming. So it's not even just the amount of, of flour and sugar. It's the tsunami effect of it being absorbed so fast. If you eat the same sugar in a sugar packet versus the sugar in an apple, the apple slows down the release of the sugar. Okay. And the different sugars anyways, but, but that's a different story. But so the food matrix is got enzymes in it and it slows down the absorption. So it's more, um, supportive for a healthier digestion and, and, you know, healthy, healthier body. If that makes sense. Um, 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 shell says you taught me to think while I eat, taking breath and being relaxed, slowing it down. Wonderful shell. Yeah. That's, that's so big shell. Hey, how's it going? Hey, I haven't seen you in a little while. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Slowing it down. It's huge, huge, huge. Definitely big. Um, no, Asia, love your videos. Thank you very much. I appreciate you saying that. What's up, Azra? Hit my weight loss goal, and then I found out I'm expecting all that hard work now, only to have to restart it. Um, oh well, congratulations, Azra. That's 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 wonderful. That's that's fine because it's better to start this whole journey at your goal weight than to start it 20, 30 pounds over. So um, don't think of it that way. Again, just stay healthy, healthy while you're doing it. Manage the emotions as genuinely as you can throughout the process, and really nourish yourself, not just food wise but relaxation, sleep, rest, get lots of rest and take care of yourself during this. this is exciting for you. So I'm, I'm happy for you. Um, do we have time to lose weight for summer? Yeah. I mean, what is it? March, but who gives a shit? <laughs> How about you just master your weight? So you never have to lose some weight for summer again. Not that idea. Sarah Sunshine, I've been on track for three months. Thanks to PYT. And I was looking forward to my salad today. Yeah, exactly. Right. That's, that's great. Great job, Sarah. Proud of you. <clears throat> Three donut, those taste much better than Metamucil anyways. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah, Irene, opinion on Ozempic. Um, I've been talking about it, but yeah, the Ozempic, uh, you know, I can talk in more detail now that I, again, I'm, I'm here to be supportive. So if anyone's on it, you know, I, I have people in my program that are on it. So I think that I get it. You're looking for, you know, kind of a crutch or something to kind of help with the whole thing. But I think it is important that understanding that what, uh, what it's going to do, you know, food wise, let's just talk specifically. It's going <clears> to, <throat> it stimulates GLP one production. 
okay, which is a hormone that makes you feel more satisfied and it slows down absorption of food. So you feel more satisfied. But again, it's all, I think the Ozempic stuff really, and I'm not saying it's hundred percent. So I'm sure there's, I'm sure there are probably people I'd love to hear from them that are eating a lot of, a lot of fresh food, a lot of whole natural food and still need to have Ozempic. But if you're not doing that, you know, I, I can't imagine why you wouldn't want to. I can imagine you just don't want to shift up your behaviors because it comes back to the core problem. You, you can know what to do. I can sit here and tell you to eat more fiber. Your challenge is you don't know how to change your behavior. So who gives a shit what I say? But yeah, Ozempic, I don't know. Ozempic's great. If you don't want to change anything and you just want to feel kind of nauseous so you don't eat as much, then I think Ozempic's wonderful. Um, recognizing that there was an element of self-sabotage to my eating habits was an aha moment. Oh yeah, for sure. I, I always push back on people to self-sabotage though, simply because I think it's less self-sabotage and less, no, it, it's less self-sabotage and more that you don't have a strategy to eat a certain way. And I think when we don't have strategy to feel like, oh, I sabotage myself. But the sabotage is like when you can't force yourself to do something anymore and then you just go back to your autopilot programs and your autopilot programs are usually programs that keep you overweight. If you're an overweight person, your autopilot, you're overweight. And so my focus is not just to lose weight, but for you to live at your goal weight for the rest of your life on near autopilot. So it's a different focus. Um, it's, it's like, it's because the weight loss is a very conscious driven process. So I'll give you an example, just to, your mind. Let's think about conscious, subconscious mind. And when you think about like a cruise ship, the conscious party mind is like the captain, the subconscious party mind is like the crew. And so we need both of them for the ship to operate optimally. We can't have the captain say, get out of here, crew. I'm going to do everything because he gets overwhelmed. And we can't have the crew say, get out of here, captain. We're going to handle everything. They don't know where they're going. So we need them to work together. And so with Program Yourself Then, we're using our conscious mind to kind of set the, set the course, set the strategies, um, use willpower to install better programs that run automatically. And so in the cruise ship metaphor, that would, that would show up as training the crew right? Not doing all their work for them. That's like a diet, right? The diet's like, that's it. I'm going to control every decision we make. And you can do that for a little while. And then you fall back into automatic mode. And it's because you never trained your crew how to act differently. You never trained your subconscious mind how to act differently. And so if you're not micromanaging every little thing you do, then you go right back to what you always do because you've never retrained your subconscious mind. You never reprogrammed it. And you have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> but it's like, don't you notice like all your behavior runs on autopilot? Like this is what you're, you're dieting is you fighting against your autopilot thoughts, feelings, li lifestyle and, and eating. And you can only do it for a little while. Then you just go back to it. So what I'm talking about is how do you change that automatic behaviors? And you can, it's not, it's not a mystery. It's not even complicated. It's just, that you've never learned how to do it. You never even thought about it, but once you do it, it changes everything, but great job. Wasabi realizing that Jay, we love you, Jim. Thank you. I appreciate that. Don't understand why you're not in the millions yet. Uh, maybe someday, someday, but I'm in no rush. I, I like where everything's at right now, to be honest. Um, and I got, like I said, I will tell you this too, <clears throat> that um, right now, <clears throat> geez, my voice, uh, I was at uh, plays all weekend yelling. I guess my voice got a little froggy, but um, one thing coming down the pike is, is other options, um, things I can help you with. Cause I know, the coaching is starting to get a little full. So it's like, um, you, you can still join that if you get the program, but, um, the, the front and center program putting out for everyone is program yourself then. And that's two ninety seven. you know, you can even split the payments up. And so there's no question. This is the best weight mastery program on the planet. There's no doubt about it. And so I'm excited for people have the option to get that. And then I got some lower price options coming up after that as well. So anyways, as a scientist, I can confidently say Jim speaks nothing but facts. Wow. I appreciate you saying that because I'm not a scientist. I know I'm speaking my facts, but I like hearing that from a scientist. I appreciate you saying that. Um, perpetual hangover is an excellent description. It really is. And it's so good. I'm glad you reminded me that because I'm going to I'll make a video on that one. Perpetual hangover. But that's what it is. You know, it's like, you know, it's um, and you know this because it's so funny. You. You do this. You do this thing where. Um, let's get distracted there. Yeah, the, the the hangover thing is like you you just don't realize it. It's um now you know that because if you look at someone who's a smoker or someone's a drug addict or an alcoholic or something you don't do, like 
you're like, God, how can they not realize how shitty that's making them feel? You know, but the same thing is happening to you with the food. Like you're not internalizing how much damage it's doing to you. And once you internalize that, it's, it's very profound moment for sure. Um, Lindsay says, whenever I listen to you, I feel like the guy in the matrix when he finally figures out he's living in one. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's like that. And matrix is my number one favorite movie of all time. So I am heavily influenced by that movie. I remember seeing that movie for the first time. That was a, a profound moment in my life. I'd been reading too. I always tell this story cause I can't believe this happened, but like a week before I saw that movie, I'd read about this philosophical concept, which was talking about, uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, that how do we know we're not just a brain in a jar being electrically stimulated? Because they're talking about, you know, when they do brain surgery, your brain doesn't have any um, nerve endings in it. So you can poke a brain, you don't feel it. And so they can electrically stimulate different parts of the brain. And what they would do is they'd stimulate someone and they would know they were having a parallel process reality. They would know they were in the, the surgery room and simultaneously they would, they would have this memory that felt real, like when they were a kid at a birthday party. And so that led to that philosophical idea. Like, how do you know you're not just a brain in a jar being stimulated? And, uh, which is a fascinating concept because there's a lot of that reality. Once you start to understand hypnosis, it, it's very interesting with those questions, but yeah, the reality we live in, we don't live in reality, folks. We live in our reality, which is very important to realize. And as a dieter, you live in a dieter's reality, which let's be honest, when you think of a dieter, do you think of someone overweight or, or thin and healthy? You know, what you don't realize is the diets have, you're in a mental prison uh, that is put there by the diet industry. You, you think like a dieter and it's a mental prison you're trapped in. So it needs to be, you need to get out of it. Luckily, it's not that hard. Um, sorry for spam coming, but that caption crew metaphor was the best explanation I ever heard. Keep using it. Oh, thank you, Lindsay. I appreciate it. You know, no, I'm not spamming it. I, I love what you're writing. Um, yeah, anyone, anyone got anything to say? I love seeing it. Yeah, the caption crew metaphor is wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and that is, that, that's a, that's a gym special. <laughs> I got to come up with that. I come up with a lot of this stuff because I will tell you everything I've studied to help people with has been lacking. I'm just being honest. It, and I love it. I love hypnosis, NLP, personal development, all the diets, psychology. I study everything. I've been studying everything for 30 years and I've seen no complete system for how to master your weight. It's been a, I've had to figure it out myself, to be honest, because no one's asking the question, how do the people that lose weight for good do it? Who's, who's asking that? And I ask this question every day. You'll be the first to comment and, and answer it if you, if you have an answer. But if you want to learn how to influence your mindset to master your weight, who would you study from? Who, who in the national spotlight is teaching you how to master your mind so you can master your weight and health? And you so, say, there's a blank, right? Who? Who? Can't even think of a name. That's how crazy it is. That's how, that's how trapped we are. You know what I mean? When I say you're in a mental prison, a dieting mental prison, I mean, not just a mental prison. It's like mental prison Alcatraz. It's like a prison that's built 10 miles underground in a fortified bunker. Like, like you know what I mean? Like you're so trapped in this way of thinking. It's the main thing keeping you stuck. And um, I say it's easy to get out because there's an escape tunnel right out the side. And it's just the, 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 the first step to getting out of that prison is to realize you're in the prison. Back to, back to what you were saying, Lindsay, right? It's like realizing, oh, oh, holy shit. It's like the matrix. It's like, oh, I'm in the matrix. You're in the diet matrix put there by the diet companies. It's, it's 99% your mindset. Yeah. Oprah <laughs> Kelly said Oprah uh, and then followed up with JK. I get it. Yeah. She's, she sucks so hard at the mindset piece. And I love Oprah. I, I think she's a, a swell lady. I, I I'm a fan. Like I like her. But um, to learn anything about weight loss from her is just silly. You know, she's just, I, I'm not saying she seems to represent, I will say, because I, I have people, people say, reach out to me and say, oh, you know, she, how she do this? How is she doing this to people? I don't know. I give her the benefit of the doubt. I think I'm just going to throw that she's being altruistic and wants to help people. Maybe, maybe she is, maybe she's not. It's not for me to judge that. But I think she does, she's very good at connecting with people. And I think, she's appealing because you're like, Oh, she's every woman. She's telling every woman's story, you know? And I, and okay, fine. But her solutions are every woman's solutions too. And they suck. <laughs> so you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Associate with her, you know, cause we, she's Oprah, Oprah, right? So she's a superstar, super success. Definitely. But when it comes to weight, she wasn't, 
when she comes to weight, she's just every woman. Great. Just like everyone else. But I'd listen to her about weight as much as I'd listen to your friend who's 150 pounds overweight. That's been struggling with weight, weight loss for 30 years. Do you know what I mean? Like you have to, you have to reframe Oprah when you think about weight. And so she's on the medicine now. Okay, great. You know, um, you all probably know people now at this point on the medicine that have lost some weight. So I'm not knocking it. You know, it, it's, we all get to choose what path we want to do. And I appreciate that, you know, that you do whatever you want to do. So that's why I say, if you want to do a Zembic, knock yourself out. Um, I, I have people in the program that are on a Zembic that still use the program because it's not a cure-all. I think we can safely say that. I don't give a shit if it's a cure-all, Jim. Great. I don't give a shit if you give a shit if it's a cure -all. I don't care. We all get to choose what we want to do. So I want people to be, I want people to live at their goal weight in whatever way they choose to do it. And I think that um, when I talk about some more holistic, comprehensive way you can make it happen. But if you don't believe that and you want to do Ozempic, then you'll still get some value out of listening to me, I would imagine. You know, yeah, Daniel says, no one's, no one's talking about mindset and weight loss. And that's crazy to me. Because don't you think, don't you all think that your mindset might have something to do with your weight and your eating? Like, what the fuck? Are we crazy? You don't think your mindset has anything to do with your weight loss? You don't think how you think about yourself, how you think about food, how you think about habits, you don't think that has any impact on your weight? Oh, yeah, Jim, it matters, but but it what really matters. I know what I got to do, and I just got to get myself to do it. And it's like, okay. What a crazy world. What? Erica, finally joined the program. Can I do a week of free training calls after I'm done traveling? Yeah, absolutely, Erica. Here, I'll tell you what. Great job, okay? Great job, Erica. I so, can't wait. I can't wait to get to meet you. So, yes, um, you're traveling. So just shoot me an email, okay? You'll start the program right away. And then when you... And I'll do this deal for anyone, anyone who um, wants to get started with the program. Again, you can start, you can still sign up with coaching and that's about to go away. I told you this before. You can sign up for coaching, eight weeks of coaching and you coach with me twice a week. Um, that's a thousand bucks. And, or if you don't want to do the coaching, it's not the right fit right now is you can just do the program for 300. And what I'm doing just as a special, this is just people on the podcast. So you have to email me this, all right? It's not just happening. So you have to email me at jim at programyourselfthin.com. But what I'll do is I'll give you a week of coaching. And so I can help you get started and I can... Even just, I'm telling you, one coaching call with me. This is what I do. This is what I do. I've been doing this for 20 years. This is, I was thinking this too, because sometimes, I'll be honest, sometimes over the years, you know, you get a little, I get a little insecure. You know, I say, oh, geez, what do I know? I'm not, I'm not a weight loss doctor. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. I don't know. Jesus, these guys are doctors and they're working with hormones and science. And what do I know? What am I really, do I really know stuff they don't know? And then I watch the guy that's on Oprah Winfrey's show and the lady and I'm like, you know what? Fuck these guys. Cause they're not even, we're not even in the same ballpark. We're not even, we have nothing to do with each other. You know, they are dealing with one aspect of it and I'm dealing with it a whole different way. And, uh, yeah. So what I mean to the, the point of that is that if I can get to talk to you for 15, 20 minutes, I can, uh, I, I can see, I can see what your main problem is in about two seconds. Usually. You can't see it. You know, I always say this as an example, that if you close your eyes, close one eye, look at your nose, you see it. Close the other eye, look at your nose, you see it. Open both eyes, what happens? Your brain deletes your nose. Your brain is constantly generalizing, distorting, and deleting things that are right in front of you. And that includes problems and solutions that are right in front of you. And so you got problems that you can't even see, and that's preventing you from finding solutions that are right in front of you that you're not seeing either. And so I can identify these very quickly because there's patterns, there's patterns. So I can't wait to talk to you, Erica, and I'm proud of you for finally signing up. And so, yes, just shoot me an email um, the week you want to do it. Like on a Monday, shoot me the thing and then you'll get access to it. All right. Um, yeah, very excited. I'll email you for the free week in a few weeks when I'm home again. Yeah, exactly. And so great job. Yeah, start listening to the, the hypnosis sessions. Um, and again, you know, I just want to point this out. I'm not selling the program either because I don't give a shit if you get it or not. I do this for free. So yes, I have marketing and I sell things. I don't do it on the podcast. My podcast is my gift to humanity, whatever little I, help I can generate in the world. Um, but it, when you do start my program, and I just put this as a counterpoint just to let you know. Remember I told you like you're, you're trapped in a mindset two miles underground in a bunker. 
you, when you think about weight loss, you think the first day is going to be this miserable shit, right? Where you're going to try and cut carbs out. You're going to do something extreme and overwhelming, which is why you never want to do it. My program, when you start it, you go through a 15 minute video, which shows you how to use the program yourself then technique, which is a two minute hypnosis technique you use at night. And then in the morning, you get a message on your phone and you listen to a five minute hypnosis session in the morning. So you start each day relaxed, calm with all this positive stuff going in your head. And you start thinking and acting differently because of that. And then you start working on your weight mastery blueprints, your mindset, lifestyle, and eating blueprints that you end up, you fill out and follow to get to your goal weight and then live the rest of your life at your goal weight. These become your personalized, customized roadmaps that get you to your goal weight. So great job, Erica. Yeah, I can't wait. Can't wait to, to meet you and speak with you. Because you've been here a long time. So a good job. Way, way to do it. Um, Daniel says, you helped me realize what my problem was within me. Yeah, that's great. Oh, within minutes. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah, that's what I mean. That, that's what I do. I, I, I get I, I, because no one does this. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm not saying there's not, there's obviously lots of doctors and scientists and nutritionists who could tell you way more about nutrition and, and hormones and what you should eat and what you should do. There's very, 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 very few people in the weight loss industry that can actually help you to do the things you know you should. And that is the big blind spot in the weight loss industry. The weight loss industry is basically everyone's telling you what to do and no one is showing you how to get yourself to do it consistently. And that's why you can't name a mindset person. You can't think of one person, one person. Think about this. You've been obsessed. You think about weight loss more than half your day, every day of your life for decades now. And you can't think of one person who can help you with your mindset. How's that possible? You know, the mindset's important. You know, it's your mindset's the thing that dooms you every time. And yet, not never mind you haven't done it. What I'm saying is you don't even know where you would learn it from. That's the point I'm trying to make because I don't want you to blame yourself. I know you blame yourself for not losing weight. And what I'm trying to say is that you can't blame yourself. You have never been given a strategy that's adequate. So it's more that you've never known. You can't blame yourself when you don't know something. So anyways. Uh, Kelly says, watch a 600 pound life as a wake up call of what my future will look like if I don't turn it around now. Yeah, that's great, Kelly. Again, though. Oh, Kelly. So if you watch the motivation challenge, because you're on my list, right, Kelly? Have you watched the motivation challenge I put out? Let me know. Because that'll knock your socks off. If you're looking for some pain based motivation, I got you guys. I'm telling you, no one gives more stuff away. I do for, for free. No one. And I'm just getting started. I, but I give you, I give you, a, I give you go to my bio and click the link. I give you a free hypnosis session. I give you a 25 minute video, three steps to mastering weight. I email you every day. And then I send you different things that I make on the fly. Like I just made this, this weight loss motivation challenge. It's 15 minutes. And I guarantee you will feel twice, three times more motivated than you do right now. If 10 times more, it's crazy. It's just free. I give it to you. All you got to do is just click a link and put your info in. Yep. Erica says, I've gotten so far in three months listening to lives, podcasts, ready to take it to the next level. Yeah, Erica, you're going to be blown away. And plus, we got live classes on Tuesday as part of that program. Um, and I'm, I'm updating things all the time. I'm always making things better, you know, always. It's the, the philosophy I live by. This is Tony Robbins, constant and never ending improvement. Always improving, always, always, always making things better. And program yourself then. I have had program yourself then as a course for 20 years. 20 years. I've done 20 versions of it and I'll do 20 more. I, I just keep making it better and better and better. And um, I will say doing the group coaching, I started doing that last year. That has been that has been a great decision for my part because it's been great working with a lot of people all at once to refine the program. But yeah, you're going to love it. I, I love it. <laughs> I think it's wonderful. Age Bob says, I joined Friday and I've slept with AirPods in the three nights because I can't make it through the sleep noses. Yeah. I've never fallen asleep so fast. I love it. Yeah, of course. Right? I'm going to take a bunch of pictures. Those are, those are good. Whoop. Get these guys out of the way. Blocking things up. Yeah. That's so great. Heather, great job. And I can't wait to meet you too, Heather. Uh, but yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, again, it's it's fun. You know, what if what you say, like, oh, God, I can't start, I don't know, I can't start another diet. Well, I know. That's why this isn't a diet. 
could you start could you start listening to a, a 10 minute hypnosis session and having the deepest sleep you've ever had in your life and waking up refreshed tomorrow and listen to a five minute session in the morning and starting your day relaxed and calm easily and comfortably making healthier food choices without feeling nauseous without having to inject yourself without having to pay thirteen dollars a month yeah, that's awesome heather proud of you because the sleeping improvements a huge part of the process oh yeah kelly okay wait so you're on the you're on my email list though right kelly you got the emails for it kelly if you tell me you're not on my email list Okay, he says you're our person, Jim. You are rocking. We appreciate you being here five days a week. And that's why I love being here. So I, 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 again, this is my mission. I tell you this. My mission is to help as many people as possible live at their goal weight. And I'll just keep chugging. I'll, I'll be chugging away on that mission for the rest of my life. And um, that's why I love the podcast. Because I love that I can get out here every day, you know, and just put these ideas in your mind. I've got the truth on my side. That I know. And so I know the more you hear this, the more it, it just takes a little while to sink in because... You don't live in a vacuum, you know, you live in, in a, 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 we're, we're surrounded by hypnotists. Oprah's one of them. Uh, all the food ads are another one. All the diets are another one. The culture is another one. Your family and friends are another one. You're, you're getting shitty messages all the, all the time when it comes to your weight. And I try to be at least a beacon of some sanity and, and uh, you know, honesty to help you actually move down the path the way I see it. And I don't just, I'm not talking my ass here. I've done almost 6,000 private weight loss sessions. I've been doing this for 20 years professionally. And again, there's just, it's just, it's a very unique skill set. You don't, you don't get people to talk about this because everyone's just telling you what to do. And, and you know, it, it requires that you got to know a little bit what to do. You know, you got to know a bit about nutrition and, you know, different things, but most of it, the vast majority of what's going to impact your weight ultimately is your ability to get yourself to do the things you already know you should do. You don't need to learn anything else about nutrition. You already know enough about what you should and shouldn't need. You just need to be able to get yourself to follow that more. And I think my programs are unique in that way. There's just not many programs that, that do that. Um, uh, Luna says, I do a lot of sports, but at night I binge eat chocolate. What should I do? Um, yeah, okay. So binge eating chocolate at night, you know, like, again, I would do, I would start with the five, two model, five days, clean eating, two days of pleasure or some, again, those numbers don't have to be perfect. So you might start, if you binge eat chocolate every night for the last five years, my initial goal would be because I got to get through one night. Can I get through one night without binge eating chocolate? That'd be my goal. I'd eat an extra big dinner. I'd set myself up for success just to get through a night without eating chocolate. And then I'd see how that went. And then I kind of go from there. If it was easy, I'd go for two nights. That was easy. I'd go for three nights up to four or five nights. And then I would have chocolate on the other nights. Oh, but I'm going to binge them on those nights. Who gives a shit? You just reduced your binging by 60, 70% by cutting it down from seven to two. Um, and then what happens when you don't binge five nights a week and then you binge two nights a week is you realize I don't like binging. It doesn't feel good. And so now you've changed up your neuro associations and you start to walk down the path of, I don't want to binge on chocolate. I don't want to eat it. Where's the sweet spot? How do I get the most enjoyment out of chocolate? So that's just, you know, an idea. Kelly, are you crazy, Kelly? Kelly, how do you listen to me every day and have not gotten the hypnosis session or watched the video? Kelly, you better do that today. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Kelly. Yeah, you got to do it. You, the 600 pound life is, is when people watch the 600 pound life to try and motivate themselves, They've got some deep, deep intuition that I'm not really motivated and I got to do it. And you got to some intuitive sense you're on the right path because what what really motivates us is pain. You Again, it will go back to the, the pyramid shape, but a motivation pyramid, pain's the foundation of it. Pleasure is the majority in the top of it. We need a pain foundation and we want to live in the pleasure, but we need a pain based reason. This motivation challenge I give you guys. So if you go, if you go sign up on my list. I'll email it out today. I don't, it, you only get it at certain times because that's what I'm doing. I got different things that come out different times because um, you got to take action, you know, but it's uh, right now I'll, I'll send out the motivation thing probably this week. Um, you, you, you'll still get a link to it, but uh, it's 15 minutes and this will knock your socks off in terms of motivation. I know motivation and you're not motivated folks. If you're not losing weight, you're not motivated enough. Unless you know the science of motivation. If you know the science of motivation, and you're using it, then uh, I take it back. But 
if you don't know the science of motivation, how could you be motivated at the highest level? And if you're not motivated at the highest level, what kind of results are you going to get? How could you get the best results with something if you're not motivated? So motivation is always step number one for mastering your weight. Motivation is the engine that, that drives the car, drives the, the ship. Come on, Kelly. If I've done it all, this is the best. If I if stress is the problem, why would we do stressful diets? <laughs> Heather. Right, folks, did you hear that? If stress is the problem, why would we do a stressful diet? Right? If stress is the problem, why would a stressful diet be the solution? Someone explain that to me. I need to I need to know the answer to that. And I don't know what the answer is. I don't know why people think that. I'm I'm out I'm in my own world for a long time now, but you're all dieters. Why would you think a stressful diet would be the answer? And it's a weirder question when you realize you've tried the stressful diet so many times and they haven't worked on top of it. It doesn't make a lot of intuitive sense just at the beginning when you ask the question, but then it makes even less sense when you realize you've tried stressful diets probably hundreds of times and it hasn't worked on top of it not being a very logical idea from the get-go. So I don't know. <laughs> but I'm glad you realized that, Heather, and, and course corrected. Great job. <laughs> Jay says, Jim is our guy. I'll do it today. All right, Kelly, I'm going to looking out. I'm, I'm literally, I'm going to look and see who signed up today. I better see Kelly's name. Uh, I mean, I'm a fan. I just haven't done the email yet. Yeah, do it. Do it today, Kelly. Okay. Because even if like this, I'm trying to tell you all folks, don't, don't let this be. This isn't the all or nothing thing of diets. Okay. I'm an all or something guy. I think that all or something is the, is the path of success. And that even goes right to what I'm talking about here. I know the most action oriented people are going to say, I'm not going to sign up for that yet because I'm not going to listen to it today. I'm not going to watch it today. So I'll wait till I'm motivated, then I'll do it. And please don't do that. Just go and opt in. And then you'll always have a link to the hypnosis session in the video training. But what will happen instantly is I'll start emailing you every day. And, and it, hey, maybe you'll hate it. Just unsubscribe. unsubscribe. It, it's easy to do. But you might love it. It's real positive content. Like it's, it's, it's legit. It's not me just selling you shit. It's me giving you real, real valuable insights. I think it used to be a program I charged for. It used to be a hundred dollars a month to get these emails plus some other trainings. So, I mean, so it, even if you don't listen to the hypnosis session, you may not watch the video, you're going to get these emails and they're going to impact you. They're going to, they're going to cause you to think differently. So you should all do that. Yeah, you probably said the million dollar question, right? That is the question. It's a weird one. I feel like Jim is the one person I fangirl over. <laughs> That's great. Well, I love that. Uh, and by the way, too, yeah, I'll tell you another one. I always forget to do this at the end is if you don't follow me, like if you're on TikTok and you don't follow me, what? You should follow me. I put new videos up constantly. And again, you know, you scroll right past when you're not in the mood, but when sometimes these videos are hit you right at the right moment. And that's like one of my favorite things is that, that emails are like that. The program's like that. Cause I know like what really makes change is you needed to be, you need to be supported. I think of my program as it's like a weight mastery cocoon. It, it's an immersion program. I deliver it through your phone. Betty, you haven't gotten an email yet either. How are some of the, the people that watch me the most not on my email list? Just, uh, well, Betty, if you're on Instagram, you can go to my bio and click the link there. Or if you're on a podcast, I always forget to give my podcast people this. You can go to programyourselfthin.com. Yeah, I know, Betty. I see you every day on Instagram. Yeah, go get that because the hypnosis session is awesome too. Because I don't even know if, you know, I, the majority of people have never experienced hypnosis. And they're the lucky ones because the other minority of people that have experienced hypnosis Again, I'm not putting any of my hypnosis colleagues down, but hypnosis is one of those things where sometimes people are doing it part-time, sometimes they get the best training. I'm one of the highest paid hypnotists on the planet. People pay me $25,000 to work with me privately, one-on-one. -on -one. I'm, I'm a world-famous hypnotist. <laughs> I don't know how to put it any other way. So my hypnosis sessions probably aren't going to be the same as your cousin when they try to hypnotize you or the person down the street who does it, uh, you know, three hours a week um, or some, you know, awful session you listen to online that sounds like it was, you know, recorded by a computer. 
this is what I do. So, you know, and I give you guys free stuff all the time. You got to get my email list and I got new stuff coming. So look at me. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to give stuff away for free to you all. Life's funny like that. I've, I've been selling my programs for a long time too, though. It is funny. You got to like work just as hard to give free stuff away as you do to have people buy stuff. It's so funny, isn't it? Because people that, that invest, people that invest like, well, obviously 25 gram. And for a long time, I was doing private coaching um, with a small group that was five grand and even a thousand dollars. And these people are, they don't need as much convincing. It's weird because they're extra motivated. They're, they're a certain type of person. Um, but then, yeah, sometimes giving stuff away for free is the hardest thing to do. <laughs> I almost go three kids. This is my quiet time. Oh, Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely need this because Kelly, what this will do, even just the one session. And by the way, uh, you all can, my YouTube channel is Jim Kitsoulis. You can go there. I have hypnosis sessions on there. I have like hour long ones, four hour ones, a couple eight hour ones. I put like long hypnosis sessions up there and they're free. They're just free. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Uh, and then, um, yeah. So, uh, there's that. And then I have SoundCloud too. SoundCloud, if you search SoundCloud and Jim Katsoulis, I have a bunch of hypnosis sessions there as well. And um, you're never going to believe it. They're all free. <laughs> Those are all different kinds too. So, uh, so yeah. Um, how to change my email address or email stop getting buried. Going to start new Addy for program. Yeah, Erica, just shoot me an email and I can fix that for you. Jim at programyourselfthen.com and I'll, I'll change that. So when, as soon as you get that straightened out, shoot me the new email and I will... I'll change that for you. Um, I think people should worry about hypnosis. Will we be made to cluck? Right? I get it, Sheila. That's, a, that's everyone's first question. And um, as you can tell, I'm probably conspiratorial minded, but I think hypnosis has been marginalized and, and goofy, gooficized for some reason. Because I think it's very powerful. I think it's the most powerful psychology for you absolutely actually taking control of your, your mind. So I'm not really talking about hypnosis in the traditional sense of like me hypnotizing you, like, like you come to my office and I hypnotize you. I'm talking about hypnosis more in the context of it's a process that you're in control of and all hypnosis is self-hypnosis. So just so you all know, folks, A, every single person can be hypnotized, right? You're all hypnotized all the time. How do I know that? Because do you watch movies and TV shows? Do you ever watch TV or ever watch movies? Okay, that's a state of hypnosis, right? You're just casually sitting there calmly, passively imagining everything you're watching. And even though you're in a dark room, you're having this whole experience based on what you're watching. You watch a comedy, you're laughing. You watch a drama, you're sad. You watch a horror movie, you're tense. You watch a sporting event, you're on the edge of your seat. So it's, the, it's light hitting your eyes, sound hitting your ears, and you're having completely different physiological responses sitting in the exact same spot. How does that make any sense? Because your imagination makes it real. When you watch sports, you literally release adrenaline. So your mind is very powerful and you're using hypnosis every single day. The thing is, I should say, you're having hypnosis used on you. You're very rarely using hypnosis to program yourself. And yeah, you wanna know if you're cluck, being made to cluck like a chicken? You've already been made to cluck like a chicken, but you're not clucking like a chicken. You're eating constantly and eating shitty foods that make you hungry all the time. So yeah, they do hypnosis and they link it with something goofy, but then they use hypnosis to get you to eat shitty foods constantly to start stupid fucking diets that never work for you. What sense does it make to start your Weight Watchers plan for the 30th time? You want to talk about trance behavior that doesn't make sense? Look at how you eat and look at how you try and lose weight and let me know that you haven't already been hypnotized. So more of what I'm offering you is how to wake up from the hypnosis you're already in. Don't you find it odd that you can't stop yourself from eating? You want to lose weight more than anything in the world and yet look how you keep eating and living. Don't you find that odd? If I didn't know better, I'd say that was hypnotic behavior. You doing things that you don't even want to do. That you don't realize you're doing. Is that why I keep scrolling even after my show ends and I'm not finding anything else to watch? Yeah, absolutely. It's hypnotic behavior. It, and it's, 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 see, hypnosis, there's a lot to it. You know what I mean? Like, like the, the scrolling, the never ending scrolling, looking for something to watch, it's dopamine driven, but it's a hypnotic behavior because you're doing an autopilot with no conscious awareness. You're scrolling on autopilot. 
for example, next time you start scrolling, set a timer and see how long you scroll for. Stay conscious of your scrolling. See how long you can do it for. And you'll find you can't do it for long. Your scrolling is not... Paul, cut it out. Dog goes in the corner behind the chair so she can bite her feet. <laughs> but I can hear her because she's... <laughs> well, come here. You want to say hi? You want to say my dog? Come here, Tal. You want to say hi, everyone? Come here. Baby. Look at this baby. Look at this girl. Say hi. Oh no, oh no, baby. Look at this baby girl. She's the sweetest. But she loves to eat her feet. She loves eating her feet. <laughs> and she thinks I don't know, but I can hear her. She's the sweetest. Love that dog. Um, yeah, she says so true, right? It is true. So the hypnosis, yeah, you gotta. We always say in the hypnosis world, we say you are your own best or worst hypnotist. But you're upstairs chattering in your head nonstop. You're you're running on autopilot, um, which is your subconscious mind. So you want to learn how to influence it. Once you do, it is absolutely magical. It's a completely different path, and it becomes a path of mastery. You start. You don't just change everything all at once. You systematically work on changing habits and automatic behaviors and feelings and thought patterns that support your goal of living at your goal weight. It's just like it is literally night and day difference. It's like I watched that Oprah Winfrey thing and it's like, you got to join that special within the paradigm of being a dieter. But when you watch it from my perspective, I'm just like, this is so silly. Like it's silly to the extreme. It's like watching, you know what it's like? I'll tell you what it's like. It's like, it's like, imagine that Oprah, it was a smoker and she's like, I just can't stop smoking. She's like, this thing does it. It causes not as much of the tobacco to be absorbed into my lungs. And, you, and you, like, imagine you as a non-smoker watching this, this dangerous medicine, this new dangerous medicine that makes like only 60% of the, the smoke on your lungs. So it's 60% less dangerous. And you're just like, well, but why don't they just stop smoking? Do you know what I mean? Like, that's how I watch it. Tall, stop. Hey, that's how I watch the special. It's like, holy shit. You're, you're like, we're, we're starting the conversation with all the, the crazy stuff you're doing consistently to create the problem. And then we're talking about how to treat the problem. Instead of talking about all the shit you're doing. It's like it's like planting a seed for a tomato plant. The tomatoes grow. I say, I hate tomatoes. How do I get myself to like tomatoes? Well, we can talk about that. But, but the real story is, why did you plant a tomato back here? Let, we should talk about that part too. And, and it's we never talk about what we're doing to create the problem. Not really. You know? Anyways. And if I watch scary movies, I'm terrified for weeks unless I'm on antidepressants. Yeah, exactly. So again, watching scary movies is such a great example of hypnosis. You're in a safe environment. If you're watching a comedy, you'd be laughing and feeling great. But because you're watching something in your mind, your mind makes it real, literally makes it real. That's fascinating. Again, when you understand your mind, it is, you, you, you just understand what's going on. And once you understand what's going on, everything changes, you know? <laughs> the puppy, yep. The cutest. Yep, she's a beauty. I love that dog. All right, everyone. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, yep, Betty says she's going to go get the, the yeah, go, go over to Program Yourself thing. Get the hypnosis session, Betty. Right? And all the rest of you, too. Go get the hypnosis session and watch the video, Three Steps to Master Your Weight. Go check it out and see if um see if that makes more sense than, uh, well, not even more. <laughs> see if it makes sense. Uh, go check it out. All right, everyone. Thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, and listen to the podcast. Podcast is every day, Monday through Friday. Uh, you can listen on any podcast platform. It's on YouTube, the videos. And uh, Kelly, you better go sign up right now. All right, everyone. Have a super day. We'll talk soon. Bye.